guys, today I'm going to be talking about um, a guy who at my locals and I see him pretty often and about this time right before the beginning of the month he begins trying to sell his uh, Magic the Gathering collection for rent. And this is, has happened many many months and I always give him a really good deal. I give him better than the buy list that he would receive anywhere in Houston really and the buy list I go off is Strike Zone Online's buy list and that's in my opinion the highest in Houston. And then the, also the benefit would be I don't nick, nickel or dime him for uh, conditioning. I'm not a big, you know, I'm not a big uh, fan of doing that for conditioning. So I've been looking at the ice cream truck. It just looks like this really weird, like not safe ice cream truck. Like if I was a kid, I would not want to be near this ice cream truck. It's been like circling around this whole time I'm making all these videos. Um, so yeah, the. I don't know, like Magic the Gathering is so weird when you think about it in terms of economics and how much people put you know, their livelihoods in Magic cards. And when I mean like people, I mean the people are my locals. So I have a collection, but I would never risk like rent money or food money. I would never like eat worse. Like I would, I would not be like, okay, I'm gonna stop eating in restaurants so I can save money from Magic the Gathering. But a lot of people I know do this. And a lot of people I know, even to the extent that they don't, they need rent money and they spend the money that they could have been saving for rent on magic cards that they have to sell later. Uh, it is kind of like an addiction. It's almost like a drug addiction, right? When you're using resources, mainly money, uh, but also time. I mean, time is a huge resource because time is money. Uh, like I said, if you go to your Friday Night Magic and you go there from 6 until two o'clock, you could have been working at Walmart from six until two, and that would have been, what, eight hours? That would have been an entire eight hours times $10 an hour. That would have been $80 that you were missing the opportunity of. And that only assumes that it's Walmart, right? And someone in comments would be like, oh, Walmart doesn't pay $10. I'm using that as an example, okay? So when you look at the time and the money that people have put into magic as opposed to like other stuff, like basic necessities, like, you know, like spending time with their family, spending time with their significant other, spending time with their friends, it's kind of like, wow. Um, I've never had a girlfriend who liked Magic the Gathering. Never, ever have I had a girlfriend who liked Magic the Gathering. Um, they, you know, like other stuff, they like going to branches, going to the mall, shopping. Uh, they do like some of them. Um, in the past, I dated a girl from Dallas and she liked uh, video games since she's a big fan of cosplay. Um, just the long distance didn't work out and I didn't want to move to Dallas and she didn't want to move here. So, but anyway, overall, Magic the Gathering, when you compare it to like other hobbies, right? is relatively cheap, so that's good. But the commitment to it that a lot of players have to the game, the fact that they are going to drop $1,000 on a modern deck and then drop more money to play at, you know, to travel and to play and to go to these tournaments and go to GP, to buy airplane tickets, to go to Las Vegas, tremendous amounts. Um, tremendous amounts of commitment and that's great. I mean, that's awesome for a game but when you have to pay your rent and your choice was to buy more magic cards, it's not a, um, it's really become a drug addiction. I mean, I don't know how else I can compare it, like what else I can compare it to, but I mean, what else in life is like that, right? Bye guys.